Hello everyone and welcome to a new Celeste Any% Percent tutorial. And the reason I'm doing this, um, the reason I'm making a new tutorial is, so the previous tutorial has been out for about a year now, and so first of all, a lot has changed in the speedrun since then. Uh, new strats have been developed, some easier ways of doing certain rooms have been found. I want to cover some of the new stuff, but also one of the biggest complaints that I had about my previous tutorial series was the length of the episodes. Um, because in pretty much every episode, I spent a long amount of time in each room just going over pretty much every possible way to get through each room. Like, I covered all of the different options, but kind of what resulted from that was not only a tutorial that was very long, but also one that was more centered on kind of intermediate level strats. And I think that may have, it could deter players slightly if I start with some of the harder strats. So another focus of this tutorial will be to mainly just prioritize some of the easier stuff, the stuff just to get started with the speedrun. And I might cover some more difficult options every now and then, but I really just want to be this to be just a runner's first tutorial and something to help you just get started. Because it, once you get to the point where you want to pick up intermediate strats, um, I would personally personally recommend just looking around at other people's runs and labbing things out yourself. Um, since I don't I don't think a tutorial is absolutely necessary once you start getting into say like sub forties or even the thirty five range. Uh, so this tutorial would be mostly for people who are just trying to get kind of mid forty times stuff like that. And the last reason for a new tutorial series is that some new tools for uh, just kind of smoothing out the practicing process have uh, been made since then, uh, primarily a Demo Jameson Speedrun Practice Tool, which will not only help you practice, but it will also help me um, teach more efficiently. I won't have to debug warp constantly like I was last time, and I'll be able to just do things a little faster. Um, it'll definitely help streamline the process. So now that that's aside, um, another thing I wanted to do is instead of getting straight into all of the speed tech and different things that you have to do in each chapter, I want to just go over any preliminary steps that you might want to take before you start speedrunning. So um, first of all, uh, your platform of choice for running. So every, every console, the so PC and all consoles are now um, on pretty much the same patch as Celeste. It used to be the case that um, PC was on a more recent patch that was more ideal for speedrunning. But now that uh, all the different systems are uh, pretty much on the same patch, uh, you can run on pretty much any platform you want. You can run on PC, you can run on Switch, Xbox, um, PlayStation. But uh, I would personally recommend if uh, you really want to get into speedrunning uh, to play on PC because there are a lot, still lots of things that you get on PC that you don't get on uh, other systems. And so I highly recommend you get this game for PC if you want to start speedrunning. If you don't plan on getting too serious with it though, uh, go ahead and use whichever platform you prefer. But remember, on PC you do get um, mods, you do get live split. You do get the option to play keyboard if you want to. And you can use pretty much any controller you want if you don't want to play keyboard. And remember, there is no major advantage to using keyboard or controller. It's all entirely preference. So uh, play with what you want. Um, but I'm going to be going over some software and other tools that you could get if you are playing on PC. So um, yeah, give me one sec. So what you're going to want to get first, if you do want to run on PC, is open broadcast software, OBS, which is um, one of the most popular screen recording tools uh, for PC. Um, if you are running on console, I'm sure there are lots of other capture cards you could use, but um, OBS is very easy to use. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be linking all of the different tools you can use uh, in the description of this video. So you're going to want to install OBS because 
Uh, if you want to submit a run to the speedrun leaderboards, you have to have a video recorded. And while we do accept um, like camera recorded runs as long as uh, it's readable, um, recording your screen directly will make it much easier for verifiers and make uh, just if anyone wants to watch your runs, will make it more enjoyable to watch. So um, definitely get OBS first. Another tool that you'll want is LiveSplit. Uh, LiveSplit is a tool used by pretty much all speedrunners to keep track of your speedrun times. It records all your best times. It lets you see times for individual segments of the run. Um, and the best part is when it comes to slow speedrunning is that if you are running on PC, LiveSplit includes what's called an auto splitter, which is a program that I think just kind of downloads itself once you add Bliss for Celeste, but it basically um, breaks up the times in your run automatically as you play so that you don't have to manually keep track of your times. It just automatically splits for you, and that makes uh, tracking your speedrun times a lot easier. So get live split. Um, next is Everest, which is a mod loader for Celeste. And of course, running Celeste with mods is not allowed. Um, even if you have Everest and you aren't using any mods, your runs will still get declined um, because rare fires can't be certain that you aren't using mods. So um, the main reason that I would recommend Everest if you're going to get into speedrunning, so you can download it here. Uh, but there's one mod in particular that I highly recommend you get uh, and you need Everest to use it. And that mod is Demo James' speedrun tool which allows you to do things such as create save states um, to help you repeatedly do the same room over and over again without having to go back. Um, it allows you to time individual rooms. So if you want to try different ways to do a certain room, you want to see which way is the fastest, uh, this will keep track of your fastest times in each room. And it does a, just does a lot of different things to help speed run, uh, streamline uh, the process of practicing speedruns in this game. And it's a lot easier than using debug mode to warp around. Um, it's very, it's a very easy mod to use. Um, so you definitely want to go and install all this. And when you're when you're practicing runs, I recommend having this enabled just for when you need to use it. Just remember to switch back to vanilla Celeste whenever you're done um, with practicing. Because once you start doing full runs, and if you want to record full runs, you need to do that in the vanilla version of Celeste. And I will show you how to swap between different versions. So give me one sec. So you're going to want to um, first navigate to this folder. I'll show it up on screen here. Um, but this is essentially where all of your files for Celeste are contained if you run on, uh, if you use Steam. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact location is if you've got the game through either Epic or HDIO, but I'm sure there is a similar directory to this one with the same kinds of files. Um, you'll see if you've installed Everest, you'll have some Everest-related files in here as well. Um, and when you do first install Everest, uh, this executable right here, this will be the Everest version of Celeste. And the vanilla unmodified version of Celeste gets put in this folder called Orge. So if you want to switch back to regular Celeste, I recommend making a folder where you can put uh, the Everest version. I just made, this is a folder I made right here. Everest doesn't make this automatically. I just made a folder called Everest so that when I want to switch back to vanilla Celeste, I can just uh, drag this into here. Or wait one sec. Uh, for some reason, I have two copies of this. But essentially, you just uh, I can just drag this into here and then take the original version out and then just cut and paste it into here. And then that way you can run regular Celeste if you want. But um, uh, what I did just to make it a little easier, and I'll probably put a link to the batch script I made, but I made a script that I can just run whenever I want that'll swap these right away. And that just makes it a little bit easier. There's also something that you can do with Steam IDs. Uh, I didn't do that myself because it didn't work for me, but there is a way to have both versions on Steam and you can just pick one. So that's another option. Just note that if you do it like that, then running Everest won't log your hours played on Steam if uh, you really care about that. 
So, um, yeah, that's how you can swap between the two. And then the last thing that I recommend is doing a few modifications to how uh, your inputs are bound in uh, Celeste because there are certain extra key bindings that you're probably going to want or button bindings they all likely want to use when speedrunning. Uh, in particular, uh, those are a second jump button and what is called a demo dash button, which I will explain what a demo dash is in the movement tutorial, but I'll just go right ahead and show you how to bind keys for that. So this is the Celeste settings file, which is a file that you can find um, in the saves folder. If you go to the same directory where you found Everest and all the other main uh, files, you'll see the saves folder. Then you can open settings.celeste, which contains all of your settings, all of your different key bindings, um, and things like that. So a few things I'd recommend you change. Um, first of all, if you're not using Everest, but you still want to be able to use the debug features, um, like warping with the map and things like that, you'll want to set this to uh, true. I'm pretty sure if you're using the speedrun tool, you'll be able to do this regardless of whether debug mode is on or not. But set this to true if you want to uh, use it without the speedrun tool. And you are allowed to do runs with debug mode enabled as long as you don't use any of its functions. So just be sure that you don't accidentally press the map key during a run if you do leave it on. Um, but some things that you might want to change uh, here, first of all, you, you're going to probably want two jump buttons at least, uh, because there are certain strats in the run where uh, you have to press jump twice in very quick succession, and it's difficult to do with just one button. Uh, so to assign multiple jump buttons for a keyboard, uh, if you go down to where you have jump uh, slash jump, then you have these keys assignments here. And normally you, in the main key assignment menu, you can only assign one key per action. But here, if you just assign or just add multiple lines between keys and slash keys, you can add a second key. So here I have space and L uh, assigned to jump on my keyboard. You can use, of course, whatever keys you want. Uh, for some special characters, you may have to um, look up uh, what XNA calls these keys. Like, for example, I have a semicolon assigned to certain actions, and it has this weird name here. Uh, but for most of the letters, you just put in the capital letter. Might not even end, or it might not even matter if it's capital or not. But you're going to want to have two jump keys. Uh, if you're on controller, there should be a section for buttons down here, button jump. So you just have to figure out what the name of the other buttons that you want to use are. And then you can do the same thing, add another line for buttons down here. Uh, so two jump buttons. And then the other thing that you're going to want to assign is a second um, dash button. And so if you go, and this is going to be for demo dash. So you're going to want a second button that you can press do a demo dash. And this can be any button you want, as long as it's a button that's easily accessible. Uh, if you're just very new to the run, you won't have to use this button too often. So don't worry too much about it. Just be sure that you assign that button to dash and make sure that you assign that same button, whichever button is your second dash button, that you also assign it to down. And something to note about the directional buttons is that you can only bind one key to each direction. Um, so arrows are always hard coded to be up, down, left, and right. And then you can assign a second set of keys, usually WASD. Um, but you can only assign one set of secondary keys, which means if you want to use WASD to move around or something like that, and you also want to be able to demo dash, and that means you'll have to do a little bit of extra remapping using a tool such as Auto Hotkey in order to map your WAS keys to the arrows that you can use uh, your demo dash key on down. So if you do run on keyboard and you want to move with WASD, then you'll have to use um, some sort of key remapper. Most people use auto hotkey and then just create a simple script for it. Uh, using auto hotkey scripts is allowed in the speedrun as long as you're only using it for direct, like one to one key remappings. So you can't do any like input sequences or like weird like conditional scripts or anything like that. Just key remapping, and that is allowed. 
So remapping is allowed, macros are not. But this is the script that I use. Uh, there are a few extra things that just I use that uh, you don't need to worry about. But the main part of it is this section right here. Um, so you can just kind of cut and paste this into an auto hotkey script if you want. Um, but this essentially just maps W to up, A to left, S to down, and D to right. And then the top line makes it so that this script is only active while you're playing Celeste. That way, if you have Celeste open, but you're like, in a browser window or something, you can still type the WASD keys just fine. Um, this other stuff down here is just for me mostly. Uh, this I have up here just to, if I press Control P, it allows me to just turn the script on and off in case like I'm in Everest or I'm in um, Ghostnet, the uh, Celeste multiplayer mod, and I want to type in chat, then I can just use this to turn the um, script off so I can type. But uh, And then this line right here uh, probably isn't necessary for you as well, but I have encountered a bug in Auto Hotkey where it thinks I'm pressing too many keys, and then Auto Hotkey just crashes. So this line just allows Auto Hotkey to detect more keys and not crash. So uh, you don't really need this line unless you run into that problem yourself. But uh, this part you're definitely going to want, and then the rest of it is mostly optional. Now, if you want to run on controller, um, unfortunately there is no way in-game to assign additional buttons to down, which means that if you want to use a demo dash button on your controller, you'll have to uh, map one of your buttons to a keyboard key, and then you can assign that keyboard key to down. And to do that, most people use this program called Joy to Key. And it's fairly easy to use. Uh, once you open it, you essentially just have this big list of different buttons that your controller might use. And I'm pretty sure if Joy to Key detects the controller, you can just uh, press a button on your controller and it will light up in yellow. Uh, I don't have a controller plugged in. I think this is just a glitch that uh, like residual inputs or something from when I last had a controller connected. Uh, but just disregard this. If you press a button on your controller, it'll detect it and that button will light up. So just find the button you want to use to demo dash. Um, and then you can double click that button and then assign the down key to that button. And then that's pretty much all you have to do. As long as you have Joy to Key running in, your in the background, uh, you can press that button whenever you want and it'll register a down input on your keyboard.